So you've probably heard that you have two blind spots, one in each eye. And this is true. Say this is what your left eye sees. It's a little bit angled because your nose is getting in the way. If this is the center of your vision. There's a spot right about here where you don't get any information from the outside world. Your eye is just blind there. Now luckily, your right eye's visual field does overlap at that point, and vice versa with your left eye. So if both of your eyes are open, usually your brain can just cross-reference and figure out what's missing. But if you close one of your eyes, your brain is essentially forced to make up information for this spot here, where nothing's coming in. And it's pretty good at that, but if there's something entirely contained in that area, and there's no, no clue that there's anything going through it, your brain won't see anything at all. And if you haven't done this yet, you can try it like this. You're going to close your right eye, and you're going to stare at this cross with your left eye. This will be your target. Now, if you get yourself the right distance from the screen, just go towards and away from the screen slowly while focusing on this cross, suddenly this target here will disappear at a certain point. And that's the point where it perfectly coincides with your blind spot. So go ahead and try that. Here. And you can do the same effect by just closing your left eye and looking at your right eye over here, and this will now disappear at the right distance. So why do we have blind spots? The answer lies in the structure of your eye. Inside of your eye, there's a layer of photosensitive cells that you can essentially think of as the film. They respond to incoming light and give out signals which allow you to see. They communicate with several layers of neurons that begin to process this information, and the information is then sent out to the brain through the optic nerve. Now, also back there is a bunch of vasculature, a bunch of little capillaries and blood vessels that are feeding these cells to keep them alive. So, if you were designing this system, you'd probably expect light to come in from this direction, since that would make the film out front, this stuff wouldn't be in the way, and this could go to the brain. But in the vertebrate eye, this is actually the back, and incoming light actually comes from this direction. Due to this, there's two problems that arise. First of all, the information at this end, which has been processed by the layers of neurons, has to get to the brain. But since this is the back of the eye, the brain is actually back here. So, in order to get to the brain, this information has to go through, essentially, the film. And what happens is there's just a spot on the film where all of the information goes through. And that's called the optic disc, and this is called the optic nerve. And also, that is where all of the blood vessels come through. So basically, there's just a hole where all the wiring comes through so it can get to the other side. And that is why you have a blind spot. Now, the other problem that I mentioned is that although these layers of neurons here are essentially transparent, the blood inside the blood vessels here is not and it actually casts a bunch of little shadows that interrupt the image. It's these shadows on the retina and the fact that we can't see them that's the subject of this video. But first I'm just going to mention that we don't actually know why the retina seems backwards the way it is. Um, there might be some advantage to having it this way, but we know for a fact that it's not impossible for it to work the way we would expect it to work, which is with the photosensitive ones out front and everything else in the back. In fact, cephalopods, that's squids and octopi, have that arrangement in their eyes, and so they don't have a blind spot. So going back to this network of crazy shadows that you should theoretically see everywhere you look, why don't you see them anywhere? The reason is sensory adaptation. And this is kind of the same process that causes you to forget you're wearing your wristwatch, or to stop hearing the refrigerator humming after a while. Whenever the brain receives the same information for a long period of time, it basically stops processing it. So since this network of shadows is pretty much always on the same exact spot, since light is always coming from the front of your eye, your brain just doesn't see it anymore. You literally don't have signals about those shadows going to your brain, and therefore they're invisible to you. But that being said, you would then expect that if you look at anything that's not moving for long enough, you would just stop seeing altogether. So why doesn't that happen? The reason for that is that your eye is never truly still. So even when you're staring at something, like this pen, for a really long time, for as hard as you can, your eye is still making tiny, tiny little jerking motions in different directions, and that kind of refreshes the image on the back of your eye. It moves it around a little bit so the different parts see different things. And your brain sees this as changing information, so you don't lose all of it. But if you've ever stared at something for a really long time, you might have noticed that you tend to kind of get tunnel vision. You start fuzzing out what you see on the periphery of your vision. Um, the reason that happens is due to the way your eye samples space. You can think of this drawing as the back of your eye seen through your pupil. So the drawing I drew earlier would be from the side, and this is from the front. So this kind of represents the density of how your eye samples space. So towards the center where you focus, your eye has very dense sampling, so it's very sensitive to changes here. And towards the outside, it gets more and more sparse. So you have larger and larger areas of visual space that are represented by less information, essentially. You can kind of think of them as pixels, and so the 
resolution of your eye essentially lowers as you get away from the center of your eye. And you'll notice this if you ever try to read something, even if you're an inch or two off of the word you're trying to read, it becomes completely impossible to read it because your resolution is just too low. You can't make out what it says anymore. And because of this also, the tiny little motions that your eye makes aren't quite enough to refresh these guys out here. So although the contents of each of these guys changes with each little jump, so they're refreshed. Out here, the really large areas that are all sampled by one pixel, essentially, they don't really change that much. So they might still be seeing the same thing, and eventually your brain starts to kind of tune them out. And that's why you get this tunnel vision effect, where you can still see pretty well in the center, but you kind of get this graying effect. So let me draw in the shadows that you expect to see. You have your optic disc here, and coming from here is a bunch of vasculature little capillaries going around, and they tend to avoid the center of your eye so that they don't ruin your spot where your vision is the best. So they kind of go around like this, and you have these little tiny fractured lines. So theoretically, if these shadows were to move, you would be able to see them because they would break out of the habituation and your brain would think, you know, that's some new information, and you would suddenly be able to perceive all these crazy lines all over your vision. And the way that you would have to do that is to get the direction of the light coming into your eye to change rapidly so that it moves, the shadows shift a little bit back and forth, and you're essentially replicating these little tiny movements your eye makes all the time in order to keep seeing anything at all. And this is actually possible, and it's the reason I made this video. It's a really impressive effect, and I'd love for you all to try it. You're going to need an index card or your finger if you do it just right. What you're going to do is poke a tiny hole in an index card, just a pin or the head of a pen, anything, or use your finger and make a tiny hole like this, right? And you're going to hold it up in front of one of your eyes, close the other eye, and look at a bright surface. You can look at a computer monitor or something that's just blank. Some white paper should do just fine. And you're going to hold it up to your eye, remember to close your other eye, and look through it and shake it back and forth about that fast. You're going to want to shake it so that the hole moves less than the diameter of the hole itself. So you don't want to be going like that. You want to just move it so that you have some spot that you can always see, but the hole itself is generally moving. So what you're essentially doing is making a source of point light that's moving back and forth in front of your eye, and it should change where the shadows land on the back of your retina. And if you do it just right, and you're looking at something nice and bright and blank, you should see this little network of lines. They'll be kind of a light gray, like spider webby texture across everything. And remember that since you're moving it this way, the light is going to move like that, and you're only going to see things that are aligned in this direction. Because if you have a shadow this way, and you're moving the light back and forth this way, the shadow will move up and down, but it'll still make the same shadow locally, so your eye won't notice a difference. So what you can do is move in little circles to get the best visibility, and you'll te theoretically be able to see things at all different angles. And that's how, thanks to the fact that your retina is inverted, just using a light source, a tiny pinhole, and a little bit of science, you can see the vasculature at the back of your own eye. And I think that's pretty freaking awesome. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if it doesn't work for you, and I can try to help you sort out what you're doing wrong.